Hey everybody, it's Andrew and welcome back to my channel. And as you can see, I am joined by a very special guest, the current Miss Connecticut USA, Carla Aponte Roque. Welcome, thank you so much for being here. This is really exciting for me. This is my first interview on this channel with a reigning queen or any pageant queen present, past, anything. So I am very honored to have you here. Thank you so much for coming out and doing this. This is amazing. Yeah, this is so exciting. Thank you for having me. I'm very grateful to be the very first. Yeah. And thank you for introducing me in my last name. I do have two last names. I really appreciate it. Of course. Because um, it can get a little difficult having two. <laughs> yes, yes. I looked it up. I'm like, that's how it's pronounced. I've heard it. So, <laughs> so tell me about yourself. Oh, so I guess we'll start with the two last names. So yeah. I have two last names because I was born in Caguas, mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. I moved to the United States when I was five years old. Okay. And I am currently a Miss Connecticut USA after attempting it for the second time. When they say practice makes perfect, it really, for me, comes down to experience. I lived so much. I got to do a lot mm -hmm. of really cool things along my journey. And to be able to now share that as Miss Connecticut USA is just something I'm incredibly grateful for. Um, that's amazing. So quick thing, you mentioned you were born in Puerto Rico. Yes. Um, and you lived there for a little bit. What was that like? How was that different from the from the States? So I actually moved to the States when I was about five or six. Okay. And my biggest memory that I hold very dear, and I hope it's a true memory, <laughs> is me actually riding in my Barbie Jeep mm -hmm. down to get milk at the corner store with my mom trailing behind, mm -hmm. grabbing the milk, putting it inside of my little Jeep, and then driving it right back home. You just don't see that, or at least I did not see that. Um, it was just so such a sweet memory that I have. Mm -hmm. And to be able to go back to my island as frequently as I can is something I try to do, because as time goes on, it's important to keep in mind where you come from mm -hmm. and your roots. Amazing, I wanted to go to Puerto Rico for so long, and Avello Airlines just announced that they're going yes. there now for cheap. That's a Connecticut thing. So um, you grew up in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and you moved to Connecticut, what was it, seven, eight yes. years ago? Seven years ago. So what is what makes Connecticut feel like home now? Oh, I would have to say, maybe it's just my town, mm -hmm. but I then realized it's all of Connecticut. There's mm -hmm. something about the people within Connecticut. I still love my family in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. but living here in Connecticut over these past seven years, everyone's been so welcoming. I mm -hmm. live in a pretty small town called Branford, right. mm -hmm. and I can go to the park, I can go to our town green, and have ice cream, to chat with my neighbors, just strike up a conversation, and that to me feels so quaint, homey, and I feel seen by others mm -hmm. around me in a different way that I hadn't before. That's amazing, yeah. I grew up in Connecticut my entire life, so it's always nice to see like an outside perspective of what it's like for somebody who, who moved here recently. You're fluent in three languages. I'm awful at learning languages. <laughs> Can you teach me to say something in either French or Spanish? Okay, so I'll do Spanish because I learned that simultaneously with English. Okay. I learned French when I was in school and I studied it for five years. Okay. Um, so we'll do Spanish first because I think okay. that one's always really fun. There's a lot of individuals mm -hmm. in Connecticut too that speak Spanish. So let's start with something very easy, mm -hmm. right? You know how to say hi? Hola. Hey, okay. <laughs> All right, we got one now. All right. Um, do we know how to say cat? Gato. You know, you are lying. You know more than you think you know. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. I know some things. All right, so how about I'm hungry? I don't know that. Hey, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So that's the one we're going to go with because, you know, everyone gets hungry. So tengo. Tengo. Hambre. Hambre? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tengo hambre. Tengo hambre. There you go. Tengo hambre. Okay, so now we got to get you some food. What's your right. favorite thing to eat? Ooh, I, I'm a big sushi guy. I love sushi. Oh, so you like fish. So pescado? Yeah. Pescado. Yeah, pescado means fish. Mm -hmm. So you'd want some fish. Tengo hambre. Tengo hambre. Quiero pescado. Quiero pescado. So that means I'm hungry and I want fish. Okay. <laughs> so now we can go out to eat. Exactly. Right. I can order Correct. fish. Yeah. <laughs> So, last New england -y question. Mm -hmm. So you're from Mass, uh, you're in Connecticut. What is your opinion on lobster roll? <gasps> How did I Hot know? with butter <laughs> or cold in a mayonnaise salad? You know, I knew when you said last New england -y question, that's the one that was coming. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I have no good answer. I have to say my favorite way of eating it is warm. 
Same. Okay, butter. okay, with some butter. That's all yeah. you really need. That's it. I want I'm to taste sorry. the butter, and I love mayo. I put mayo on like anything. Well, anything that makes sense. But like, <laughs> hot with butter is the way you, to go. You have to. And if we did anybody, it was my answer, not Carlos. It was, Correct. It was my answer. Yes. All him. <laughs> all right. So now I want to go a little back. Um, what sparked your interest in starting to compete in pageants? I have to thank my parents for that. Mm -hmm. When I was three years old in Puerto Rico, the beauty industry is mm -hmm. very, very large. And they actually put me in refinement etiquette classes. Oh, cool. Okay. Which you don't really hear about here in the United States. Right, yeah. So when we then moved to the States and they were like, where can we continue her training? Everyone's like, what are you doing? She's only mm -hmm. three, four, and five at this point. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of stopped and I got some of my best teachings by watching all the pageants on television. So USA, America, Miss Universe Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and then America's Next Top Model. Okay. Shout out Tyra Banks. Big fan of that. Oh, oh my goodness. For sure. I would be standing in front of my mirror trying to mm -hmm. practice it. So when I turned 16 and I saw that there was an opportunity to do a local pageant mm -hmm. for the Puerto Rican parade that was going to occur, I just knew that this was this was my moment, this was my shot. I had practiced so much in the mirror, <laughs> thanks to television and YouTube, like I was ready. And it really just became a never ending love. That's very similar to how I got interested in what I wanted to do as well. It's like you just, you see something that inspires you. And like, mine's a little weirder because like mine was like uh, when Kelly Clarkson won American Idol. Oh. I'm not a singer. <laughs> But like, just like seeing somebody achieve something on national television in front of the world, just it's like, oh, she can do that, I can do anything that I, I want to do. It feels so relatable too when you finally get the chance to see yeah. it on television. You hear stories from others, mm -hmm. but when you get to then see it and the way that they film these things, you mm -hmm. get to see the behind the scenes, you know, yeah. falling in love with these people mm -hmm. and recognizing how much similarities you have, you can envision yourself living yeah. that out or just being be a me. part of it. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific title holder from past or current reigning queen that inspires you? That's a good one because again, I don't want to alienate anybody. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of favorites, but I think right now what I'm really being drawn to is a former Miss Connecticut and former Miss USA, Erin Brady. I love her. I remember watching her. I haven't had the pleasure yet of meeting her, so Erin, mm -hmm. if you're out there, yeah. <laughs> Um, we, we message online, but my favorite thing about her was I had just graduated high school that year and seeing her on TV, mm -hmm. I don't know, there was something about her background and about the fact that no one really saw just how much of a powerhouse she was. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that gets really difficult in pageantry because you never want to compare the girls but then there's always these individuals that come out and just strike you. Yep. And she was one of the very first that I remember watching thinking, no one has her on their list, but why is she so incredible? So then to now be in those footsteps and being a sister queen to her, oh, right. it's just so cool. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is really cool. I, I love Erin. I remember watching uh, that year's pageant, like the second she walked on stage, it was just like, I think like, it just was yes. something that you just like felt different, you know, just like, so Erin, if you're watching, thank you. Yes. Please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Click over here, subscribe over there. <laughs> but that would be cool because Erin Brady won in 2013 and you're 2023, yes. so could continue a legacy here. Putting it out there. Yes, it's putting the it out there into universe. What is your favorite part of competition? My favorite phase is interview, okay. but I love everything about it because my day-to-day -day job is being a nurse. So I'm mm -hmm. not glamorous. I am not in heels, and my hair is not beautiful and flowy. I have it in a messy bun, I have scrubs on, and pageantry allows me to kind of get into that, mm -hmm. be a little more feminine, enjoy my femininity, and just being able to showcase a different side of me. But interview is what changes it all for me, because you mm -hmm. can feel glamorous and powerful by just talking about yourself and what you want to do in the world, and that is so unique to pageantry. I agree. Some other pageants have extra phases of competition, like the talent portion. I know the Miss Universe organization and Miss USA, as you know, they don't have a talent portion. Mm -hmm. Do you have any secret talents? 
So I actually sing, but before we try that, I have not warmed up these vocal cords in a little bit, um, but I do sing and I had the opportunity of being a local title holder in the Miss America system okay. and experienced that phase of competition before. Mm -hmm. um, here in Connecticut, I was Miss Southington okay. and that was so much fun and I was able to actually sing at a Yard Goats game, again, another Connecticut reference for anybody out there. Baseball. <laughs> yes, yes. It was a lot of fun and I got to sing, take me out to the ball game. Game, Fun, yeah. And I got to sing God Bless America. So those were two incredible moments that I did not think I was ever going to do. Yeah. And quite frankly, looking back on it now, I'm surprised that I wasn't even more nervous. Because mm -hmm. now thinking about it, I would be freaking out if they asked me to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> right, I mean, singing to a stadium or speaking in front of a stadium yes. full of people, let alone singing, is... Yes. I can nerve wracking. I can see why that would be. I did a first pitch at mm -hmm. the same stadium just this past couple mm -hmm. months. It did not turn out very well, so <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to be going back anytime soon. Um, it was, Mine would be awful. Though. Oh, it was so bad. And the video will come out shortly. It was, <laughs> it was that bad. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you're thinking of much worse than it actually was. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about April 16th. Special date for, for you. Do you remember what it was like, the anticipation building up to that night? Oh, yes. Very, very well. <laughs> because I actually didn't think I was going to compete again. Mm -hmm. I had already put all my shoes away, I had mm -hmm. put all the dresses away, and I thought, all right, my, my pageantry career is done, mm -hmm. I'm starting a new job, I'm a nurse, I'm still going through orientation, there'd be so much to take on, and so I really thought I wasn't going to compete again. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to go to Maya Sendoff, which is the Miss Connecticut's teen um, from last year. And I knew her and I loved her. And so I went to her sendoff party and I was, by faith, sitting at a table with Barbara, who's my new, my now director, Cynthia, who is my, um, the previous Miss Connecticut USA, and some of the sponsors. And we just got to talking about how her year had been going, and this was before she went to Miss USA. And the conversation shifted on why I wasn't competing. And I didn't have a good enough answer at the moment. It, it seemed logical in my head prior to this, like I'm working, I'm doing all of this. But in the moment, hearing how she was able to work a full-time job and how everything aligned for her, I realized that maybe, maybe I could give it a shot. And luckily I have a wonderful support system who looked at me and said, you need to do it because you're going to regret it if you don't. And I hate to tell this individual he's right um, when he is, but he absolutely was. So Sean, you know who you are. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and because of that, getting to compete at Miss Connecticut USA, I had that in the back of my mind, which helped ease some of those nerves because mm -hmm. When you didn't think you were going to do something and you finally build that courage and that excitement to do mm -hmm. it, no matter how nerve-wracking the task is going to be, you find something within you to be grateful for because you weren't expecting it. Right. And that's all I kept thinking about was the gratitude, the wanting to be present in the moment because I knew mm -hmm. I was never going to get it back. I, I'm aging out. Well, at that point I was aging out now, right, with the new yes. changes. Um, but I'm 28, or I had been 27 turning 28, so I just knew that it was now or never, mm -hmm. but really it was going to be now or just not for me. Right. It's changing that mindset. Never makes it seem like a negative. Yeah, and it's always nice too when you have that like kind of aha moment, like mm -hmm. why aren't, why am I not doing this? Yeah. Or like, let me just give it one more chance. You never know what's going to happen, and then obviously, she won. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is on loan. Yeah, yeah. She borrowed it from the title holder. <laughs> so, what was that moment like when you heard your name called as Miss Connecticut USA? I had practiced nice smiles. Have you ever <laughs> seen those videos online where brides are like, I wanted a small smile, <laughs> and they have like big, big teeth and everything? Yeah. Yeah, that was me. They say envision it, and then mm -hmm. like it will be it, like same as manifesting. Right. So, I would be at home, and I'm like, okay. What's gonna happen? Am I a crier? Am I gonna cry? Am I just gonna smile? And no, I opened my mouth wide. <laughs> yeah, no, all the pictures is me like in disbelief, just looking at Sarah going, oh my goodness. And I think the words out of my mouth right after were, oh my goodness, I'm so happy. 
<laughs> not ever did I think those were going to be the mouths. Like the first right. couple things I, I said. It's a tough thing to plan. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say like, oh thank you God, which were my second words, and I thought those would be my first, but no, my first were, I'm so happy. Go figure. I, I mean, I was, and yeah. I am happy. Yeah. Um, but I did not think that was going to be the first words. <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit about your platform as Miss Connecticut USA? So I work currently as a nurse, but prior to nursing, I was always interested in the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. After coming to the United States at between the ages of five and six, mm -hmm. my grandparents moved too, which made my heart so happy because I missed them and they weren't close. But they had some difficulties learning English. Okay. And I quickly became a medical translator, interpreter, everything you can think of under the sun. And as much as I enjoyed doing it because I was helping my grandparents, mm -hmm. I saw that there was such a necessity for individuals that speak other languages being able to obtain healthcare. So my platform and my initiative is to talk about health disparities and not only in the Latino and Hispanic communities, but the social determinants of health affect everybody. And I think the more we talk about it and recognize what we are all dealing with, what we are all suffering from in terms of lack of resources or education and equality and equity, the more we're able to bridge those gaps. And so I'm able to do that when I'm at work as a nurse and through my local different community um, charities that I work with, whether it's the Alzheimer's Association, American Heart Association, anything that touches health is important that we discuss how there are individuals out there without proper knowledge to care for themselves. Yeah, and it's amazing. I mean, first of all, thank you so much for what you do being a nurse. Um, if you guys are familiar with my channel and watching my videos, you know I experienced some health issues last year. And like, I have to say, like anybody who's ever been in any kind of inpatient care, the nurses are always like your guiding light, the person you, like I remember being in a bed just like, so miserable, like on the verge of tears and just a nurse coming to comfort me. So it is amazing what you do and I, th I, I appreciate it as a former patient, <laughs> um, I, not of yours, but of nurses, um, I do appreciate it and I'm sure you, you guys, I don't think you ever realize what you're actually doing for those people who are in their sick. So thank you. I love my job, I really do. <laughs> So one thing I love about, well, pageants in general, but especially the Miss USA organization, um, you're not serving your reign alone. You do have a little sister team, Queen Jade. Um, so I'm assuming your role to the public looks like you're kind of like a big sister mm -hmm. to her. Has she ever given you any advice that kind of like blew your mind? Like this teenage girl just gave me like <laughs> an amazing piece of advice. Yes. So I can tell you that Jade and I are very close, and I think everyone says that, but we actually sat next to each other at orientation, completely oh. by accident. Mm -hmm. And I went home and I said, I think I just met the next team for Connecticut. Everyone's like, how do you know? I'm like, I don't know, I just know. <laughs> and lucky enough, right, I say lucky enough because she said the same thing to her family. That's and funny. And so it worked out that then we were crowned together and I remember looking at her and I'm like, I knew from the moment I met you that this was for you. Mm -hmm. And that was really special to be able to share with one another and a little, a little tidbit, a little fun fact is that we got to sit next to each other. So that that'll be really something cool. we'll be sharing with the next class of Miss Connecticut and Miss Connecticut teen uh, contestants. You just don't know. Yeah. But one of the best pieces of advice that she has possibly ever given me has to do with just being in the moment. Mm -hmm. As someone who tends to be very analytical, I think about thinking, mm -hmm. right? I, I think about what's coming up next, what happened before, what are we doing right after this? I'm always thinking, and she is such a grounding force to remind me that it's all right now. Mm -hmm. Everything else will get done when it needs to get done, but for right now, we're here. And I love that because sometimes you need that balance. You need to be reminded of the now because it goes by so quickly. Yeah. And I can't believe we're already in September and leaving for Miss USA when I felt like we got crowned last weekend. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how this happened. I know. It, it flies by. Yeah, that, I mean, that is a great piece of advice and very, very wise yes. of her. She's a that. good egg. She's a good I, egg. I was not like that as a teenager. <laughs> so, no.
Miss USA is right around the corner, literally, like, you're leaving in a couple of days. So I'm actually yeah. doing a side trip before I go to Nevada. So I'm very excited, right, that we found out that it's going to be in Reno, Tahoe, Nevada. Mm -hmm. I've never been. But the preparation to getting there really for me is going to go right the day before I end up heading out. So mm -hmm. tonight I will be packing because I'm a last minute packer and I'll be packing tonight for a trip that I'm going on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll be in Florida okay. from Friday until Tuesday doing a couple fun, I don't want to spoil too much away, but I'm doing two very fun photo shoots with mm -hmm. two incredibly talented photographers. One in Miami, one in Orlando, without giving the names. I hope that those two geographical locations help. <laughs> and after I do that, I'll be flying back here on Tuesday, mm -hmm. getting on a plane Wednesday to go to Reno Tahoe, where our official check-in is on the 22nd. So I'll have two days, maybe a day and a half, to kind of relax, settle into my room, settle into the atmosphere, yeah. the time difference, and then right on to competition. Do they still do romance at Miss USA? Yes. Do you know who your roommate is? I Are you allowed to share? I do! Yeah. I believe I am. If not, forget I said it. <laughs> um, it is actually Miss New York. Okay. So super exciting to have that opportunity. I haven't been able to meet her in person yet. I saw her in passing a couple mm -hmm. days ago, but we do text. So that's very exciting to actually have someone who's close by yeah. that I can root on, another New Englander, and hopefully I just want to have a good time, right, at yeah. the end of the day. It all seems like, I, mean, I remember seeing like photos from like the like prelims and like leading up to it, the time that um, cont past contestants have been there, and it always just looks like such a fun time. It's like, mm -hmm. I want to go. Obviously, you have to do some preparations for Miss USA. What has that been like? Slightly stressful. I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie. It's been a lot of fun, but because I do work a full-time job, some days I am trying to make all the puzzle pieces work. Mm -hmm. And I'm very lucky because I have an incredible support system at home. My supervisors are all very understanding and are able to help me maneuver things mm -hmm. around. So I have been on my feet um, traveling across the state, sometimes even outside of the state to get my preparation in. Mm -hmm. But I also feel as though that's such a great preparation for what the role of Miss USA is going to be in the end. It needs to be somebody who is versatile and flexible and able to just go where the wind blows, mm -hmm. kind of, um, being able to think quick on your feet. And so even though it's been a little crazy at times, I would not change it for anything in the world mm -hmm. because I once read a quote, this is what we dreamed of, right? Even on your toughest days, there you were a couple months or years ago dreaming of having that position. Yes. And so I will take all of that stress Mm -hmm. knowing that I get to live out the dream that I've had since I was very young. And that's, that's a, a blessing. That's a great way to look at it. Like somebody gave me a similar piece of advice mm -hmm. at one point, And it's just like, this is what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, it, it is. What yes. am I, what, what am I stressing over? So now I want to have a little fun. I like Yeah. That. Do you know what rapid question and interview? Have you ever seen that rapid fire questions? Ooh, like the first thing that comes to my mind? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll be good at this. All right, so ready? Yes. All right, favorite color? Blue. Uh, favorite food? Oh, oh, uh, oh. <laughs> steak. <laughs> Good. Uh, favorite cartoon character? Oh my goodness, um, Phineas and Ferb. Okay. <laughs> I can't favorite song one. right now? Ooh, Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift. Swifty. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I like that one too. Favorite vacation spot? Aruba. All right. Um, one thing you never leave the house with? My cell phone. Without, sorry, without. <laughs> okay, one thing you don't ever bring out of the house. <laughs> one thing I, I don't take out of my home? Yeah. Oh, what don't I ever take out of my home? Um, oh my goodness. The couch. <laughs> yeah, seriously, my whole bed, all right? I can't take my bed out with me. <laughs> I can take my snuggie. That's true, yeah. <laughs> uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Good choice. That's it. <laughs> oh, I was ready. I was, I was trying to think more on the spot, fire. but I was like, I should have come up. <laughs> Should come up with more. Oh wait, I have one for everybody. Okay. Coke or cola? How do you oh, say it? Oh, Coke. Okay, just making sure, right? You never know. Is it good Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Ooh. I know. Just when I thought we could be friends. I know. <laughs> if it helps, I always say Coke, but really I mean Pepsi. <laughs> so, so you're drinking it. You're supporting the cause. <laughs> Ooh, I like apple pie. Okay. Yeah. All 
Right. My aunt, my aunt Ruba makes a really good apple pie, so that's my go-to oh. pie. <laughs> what about you? What's your favorite pie? Pecan. Ooh, okay, I that's a, a good one too. I am a pecan pie through and through. Yeah. I love it. I can eat it every day. I do like when it gets like, I don't know if it's gelatin is the right word, but like when, the, <laughs> <laughs> when, when it like congeals in the middle, that's when I really like pecan pie, like yeah. when it's like a day or two old. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to leave your pie out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> So thank you so much for taking time out of business schedule. I know like this time must be crazy hectic for you. So I really do appreciate you coming out. One thing, one last question before we go, or not even a question. Is there anything that you want, just a message you want to give to the viewers or the world out there really? Yes. Well, first, thank you for having me. I really have appreciated all of this. And I'm going to start thinking yeah. of more rapid fire questions. To yes. Send you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But my message would be to anybody out there who feels as though their time has gone past them, anybody who feels like their circumstances will not allow them to live a successful life or be able to achieve something that they've dreamed about. I've been there. I was homeless. I've experienced a lot of interpersonal and interfamilial relationships that were very difficult to wrap my mind around. But there is hope because there's you and those dreams are valid and you are worthy. So I hope that even though these are small words coming from someone you may not know, that it can fuel inside of you that continued desire to achieve those dreams because it may not happen tomorrow, but you will get there. And that's part of the journey. It's amazing. I, I'm not even going to respond because I just want that to sit with all of you. Um, thank you so much. Be sure to uh, follow Carla on her journey um, in Reno, Nevada, Reno Tahoe. Yes. Reno Tahoe, Nevada, um, coming up very soon. Mm -hmm. um, you can follow her along at Carla Aponte Roque on Instagram, as well as the official Miss Connecticut USA Instagram. The links will be down below. And definitely watch Miss USA. It is actually broadcast this year for the first time in, I think, since 2019 on the CW on September 29th. Yes. And you can, oh yes, at 8, at 8 o'clock, yes. Mm -hmm. And you can catch the Miss Teen USA stream and support Jade um, the day before yes. on CW, the app, or on their website as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a blast. Thank you again for being here and being my first mm -hmm. ever interview. Look at us, we're, we're all growing together. I know. We're taking another step <laughs> into a new, a new realm of content creation. Um, if you guys want to follow me along, my social media links are linked down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to hit subscribe and I will see you guys very soon. Bye. Bye.